Welcome to another session of our course Successful Negotiation and Communication at the University of uh, Lübeck in cooperation with the Technical University of Lübeck and uh, we finished talking about the basics of communication, the underlying psychological and sociological concepts such as um, the Schulz von Thun model, such as Watzlawick's uh, axioms of communication, such as um, the transaction analysis of uh, Dr. Berne, etc., um, etc. Et uh, and we talked about cognitive dissonance and the halo effect, and we talked about um, all kinds of uh, factors touching base on the motivation theory. And uh, now we arrived at um, the main part, the core part, uh, which is successful negotiation um, after we discuss the basics of, of communication. Uh, statistically, every German, but not every German, so the, <laughs> the numbers are the same in other countries as well, but every kind of person you may say, uh, so from scholars uh, at the grammar school to uh, pensioners not working, so everybody is involved three to five times in, uh, in negotiations, even outside of the family. So we are negotiating basically every time, not, not always, um, or not only when we are going into a shop and want to buy a car or uh, a jeans or whatever, but negotiations are basically found in three main subject areas. One is conflicts. That is, of course, uh, what you have in a lot of cases in politics when it comes to uh, conflicts uh, about territory, for example, or when there are um, some kind of um, civil uh, uproars that need to be uh, revolved. So it is about revolving disputes, solving problems and disagreements. Also, in, in those pandemic times, um, we are going to have much more people being unemployed. And, and how is communication done, for example, coming from the, co uh, from the corporations towards the media, towards the politi politicians, towards also the employees, uh, which are going to be affected. So this is also, th this may be resulting into several conflicts, for example, also between the corporations and the works, uh, the works council or the trade unions. Then it's about relationships, establishing, strengthening and securing of relationships. That is, uh, in, um, that is important in all kinds of aspects uh, when it comes to businesses. If you want to set up a relationship um, between a customer and the enterprise, if you want to strengthen that, um, because customer loyalty is quite a key differentiating factor in today's world. And, of course, finally, transactions. So this is what we all think about when we think about communication and negotiation. Uh, it is about handling business projects, sales, other forms of, uh, of transaction. And we speak in the classical sense of negotiating if persons or parties have different sometimes diverging interests and we communicate and we negotiate in order to come to an agreement. So that is a, a very pragmatic definition of a negotiation process. And um, the university who uh, first established a negotiation as not, an, not as an art but as a kind of a science is the Harvard Business School or more precisely um, the Harvard Law School. Why is it the law school? Because um, the history is that um, Harvard University, they thought about um, the, the, pros, uh, the lawsuits that are taking place in America. And of course, in America, it's a bit different um, compared to Germany. In America, you have the grand jury and you have the judge, but the judge is he's managing the lawsuit, but he's not um, the decider when it comes to the final decision maker because that is the grand jury. And now Harvard wanted to find out why, why is it that sometimes state attorney um, or a, a certain kind of uh, lawyer, um, they are successful in convincing the grand jury that um, uh, the, uh, the person being accused of having committed uh, a crime is guilty or is not guilty. So they were asking themselves the question, is there a kind of logic are there or which are the underlying principles uh, in, in their way of communication that have led 
to success or to failure when it comes to the uh, final commitment of the grand jury. And then the question was, if there are any underlying um, communication structures, methods, tools, are they applicable in business life and private life as well? Is this a more um, umbrella-like principles and overarching, are the, all those principles overarching? Are they universally uh, applicable in uh, other situations? And uh, they found out, yes, they are. And uh, therefore, it is interesting if you um, look into publications from, uh, from Harvard or look into uh, case studies covering negotiation. Unfortunately, in, in webinar, we cannot do that um, because in, in physical class, that is the big advantage. We would have um, had negotiations uh, coming from the Harvard, uh, Harvard School. Um, but Harvard now, that is interesting. If you look into case studies from Harvard, it always says project on negotiation, P-O-N, at Harvard Law School. So it's not the Harvard Business School, it's the Harvard Law School that is the originator of um, the science of negotiation. And the principle they, they laid down is called the Harvard concept. The Harvard concept. Um, that's Harvard concept. Uh, and it's actually the best-selling uh, book uh, in the world on negotiation. Um, it is very interesting. It's easy, uh, it's, it's easy to read. Uh, but, uh, of course, we will cover each of the concepts in, uh, in a couple of more seconds. Oh, one moment. I need to pause the, uh, the presentation for one second because there's a question. So what are the underlying um, findings of Howard? Uh, very, very generic. Uh, the Howard concept is an approach and attitude of mind needed for fair negotiations. And, and basically, we talked about that when we talked about the transaction analysis of uh, Dr. Berner. And I was mentioning Harris' book, uh, I'm OK, You Are OK. Um, so basically, you have the same kind of aim here. The aim is the uh, classical win-win situation. And why, why is that? Um, because if we negotiate, normally we aim not to, um, to tarnish the relationship or that has been built up with the other, with the other party. So we want, we want to increase long-term um, sustainability of the, um, of the relationship. We, we don't want to tarnish that. We don't want to damage that. So um, because that is often uh, the question shall I negotiate in a hard way or in a soft way? And the answer of Howard is neither. You, uh, you should follow the uh, what we call the SOHO principle. The SOHO principle, it's on a later slide. Soft on people, hard on points. That is the uh, Howard principle. Soft on people, hard on points. Why is it soft on people? Because, and now we better understand that this... Um, transaction analysis principle here uh, because um, and we discussed the self-esteem how important it is for fruitful communication processes um, and that is also the underlying prerequisite of uh, of how the mindset here because we want to increase sustainability and long-term relationships it's um, here means are established to use ideas of communication technology creative uh, technique so this is all the underlying things uh, which we discussed and the Harvard concept is a proven combination of using established approaches from different kind of disciplines. Like we said, like from psychology, like from sociology um, and uh, related, uh, related research and related disciplines. And these are the, uh, the very, very famous principles of Harvard, the uh, project um, on negotiation at the Harvard Law School. First, you should treat people and problems separately so this is this is this soho principle then interest count not positions we discussed that before when we discussed the iceberg model of communication you remember that or the um the second axiom of communication uh, coming from Václavík. um every communication has a content aspect and a relationship aspect whereas the latter is determining the former so that is um, the second principle. Develop options that bring benefits to both parties and agreement on mutual assessment criteria. 
Uh, let's look at each of them in more depth in this session. First, I was mentioning that before, treat people and problems separately from each other. So the first Harvard principle states that the relationship with the negotiation partner should be separated from the negotiations. Yeah? Be hard in the matter, but soft towards the people. Soft towards the people means don't attack the self-esteem of the other person. Don't criticize people openly. Don't uh, tell them uh, and express uh, to them that you disagree and uh, because then they feel that their self-esteem is not being appreciated. And that is this very famous SOHA principle. Soft on people, hard on points. Soft on people, hard on points. That is very, very important. So by, uh, and, and then there is a very, very important sentence here, which is probably, I don't know, it is, it is probably the most important sentence in all the lecture, in, uh, also in my book. By looking at the situation from the other people, uh, people's perspective and understanding the point of view of the other does not mean that you agree with him or her. So um, in, in, in German we would say, um, jemanden zu verstehen heißt nicht mit ihm einverstanden zu sein. So understanding somebody doesn't imply that you agree with the other person. So in German it sounds a bit nicer. That is super important. But uh, it is also important that you try to understand the other person. And um, that is this uh, cartoon early at the beginning, which we were uh, in depth, uh, discussing in depth. You remember that with the six and the nine and um, two people are arguing whether it's a six or a nine. And from their perspective, they are both correct. And uh, remember the Henry Ford thing, the Henry Ford quote. If there is one secret to success, it is to be able to take the position of the negotiation partner and see the world through his eyes or her eyes. And how do you do that? You keep the factual level in the foreground. Um, obtain information, question, listen, let them, let them speak. Um, so there is uh, an analogy which says uh, you have two ears and one mouth and you should use these organs accordingly so in, in the same kind of proportion. Meaning, listen twice as, uh, as much as you're talking at the beginning. Why? Because you need to understand the negotiation partner first before you can argue, before you can uh, come across, before you can uh, offer a certain kind of benefits because the, these benefits need to be meaningful for the other person. Show interest in the opinions of the other person because only if you understand where he or she is coming from, you're able to tailor your argumentation to the specific needs and wants. Uh, clear formulations, short formulations, no, right? No, don't make it too complicated. Strengthening the relationship level is key, the key underlying principle and mindset of the first Harvard principle. Don't lose, uh, don't let anybody lose face, not faith, but face. Uh, it's the same like um, this uh, losing face uh, expression in Asia. Not only Asian people are afraid to lose face, but also all other people in the world. Uh, they cling to their attitudes. They cling to their opinions. Why is that? It is because we, we, um, we discussed that in depth. It is because of the mechanism of uh, cognitive dissonance and because of the importance of reaffirmation theory. Um, so emphasize common interests. Uh, Howard is saying, look for commonalities. Look for uh, things you have in common with the other person. That is Václavík. One cannot not communicate. Pay attention to the body language. We will um, discuss body language in more depth in a, in a later section. It is difficult to control and therefore a good indicator of the relationship level. Amid emotional highs and lows, one can first reduce uh, pressure on the other by not interrupting. So if somebody is, I don't know, um, is annoyed, for example, is angry about a certain kind of situation, don't interrupt, let, let him talk, right? Or her, let, let her talk. Let, let him uh, and, and, uh, and her express negative feelings also. 
don't 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 uh, try to fend uh, to fend this off and say ah oh, this is a bit exaggerating now but um, so because that means not to appreciate the self esteem of the other person so be careful not to use offensive language um, I was mentioning that before look into my book um, for example and uh, read the chapter about uh, uh, viol uh, violentless um, uh, communication or read Rosenberg's book about um, peaceful communication Gewaltfreie Kommunikation uh, Rosenberg is the key uh, researcher in this area and he wrote uh, or he established this art of um, violentless communication it is a bit you can compare that to um, karate and judo um, because we try what we try to do when we are in negotiation we don't try to uh, to to fight we don't execute karate or yutsu or something like that but we try to use judo because why is that because we try to um, uh, take the, uh, the 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 physical energy of the other person and utilize that to our benefit and karate is more really fighting the other person or kickboxing and and um, violentness communication is more this intellectual judo I think it's a very nice uh, metaphor for that then the second one interests count not positions and that is what we were uh, we were uh, already explaining let me um, uh, use the whiteboard quickly for that so if we have um, we said about the the iceberg model I quickly uh, draw that again so if uh, two people come together it's like two icebergs coming together and um, we said that above the surface we have this so this is the position that somebody um, is pursuing the position and under underneath uh, the surface we have here the relationship level or that is the interest of the other person the interest the interest so that is um, what the Harvard people have in mind when they talk about positions and um, and interests. Um, and there is a nice uh, metaphor in this in, in this respect about um, that the Harvard professors are, are writing in their books. And uh, there are two. Um, uh, that is very interesting. There are two daughters of um, <clears throat> of a mother. And those two daughters they fight uh, for an orange uh, so every daughter wants uh, wants uh, wants an orange and um, there's only one orange and uh, they are fighting and they are arguing and uh, I want the orange I want the orange I want the orange so and the mother is totally nerved and at the end of the day she cuts uh, the orange into uh, into two pieces and every daughter gets 50% of the orange now the interest uh, was not discussed but the position was I want the orange but the interest was one daughter wanted the orange for making juice so she just needed the um, the fruit itself and um, the um, uh, the uh, other daughter she needed she didn't need the, um, the juice she just needed um, the out uh, the outer shell the shell of the orange in order to make uh, orange marmalade so, so you just need the uh, the shell for that so interestingly if there would have been a discussion about the interest not the position every daughter could have arrived at a hundred percent every daughter could have arrived at a hundred percent now everybody's getting 50 percent and that is a very very important um, finding now um, because what we um, what we are saying that um, here so um, uh, normally we say that the, the cake is um, we think that the cake is limited so that that is the negotiation part here that is what we are negotiating a car or a certain kind of amount of money for a house or whatever and um, if the, if there are oranges cut into two kinds of pieces um, and, and we agree on something so that is what we call a distributive a distributive distributive verhandlung distributive uh, negotiation but what we what we should go for it's terrible writing um, but what we should aim at we should try to enlarge the cake we should enlarge the pie uh, we should make the cake bigger for all parties uh, and that is um, 
what we call integrative negotiation. Integrative uh, negotiation. That is making the cake bigger for all parties being involved. And that is, of course, a big art. That is a very, very big art. Um, you have to be talented to, uh, to do that, to be very sensitive, empathetic, um, to make the cake bigger for all parties. But normally, just the belief that the cake is limited is leading to uh, a distributive uh, negotiation. So interests can be approached in different ways while positions are being fixed. You have to find out the underlying interests by asking open questions. Why, why not? What consequences does, does the decision have for the other side? Speak directly, concretely about interests. Successful negotiation requires always hardness, so hard on points, but also openness. You need to be open-minded for suggestions and uh, the, uh, the, the worries of the other person, the problems of the other person, the concerns of the other persons. Then third, third one, and you, you, you already sense that. So what the Harvard um, professors are suggesting here is not rocket science, so it's just common sense. But um, that has proven to be very, very uh, pragmatic, pragmatically, but efficient um, uh, techniques in negotiation processes, whether it's private, whether it's business does, or political, doesn't make any difference. Explore options. Before reaching a decision, various options should be found or can be found. Develop as many options as possible to be evaluated and decided on later with the interested parties. Drive always towards the solution of a problem that will meet the interest of all parties being involved, all stakeholders being involved, not only your interest, because the other person, like we said when we discussed um, the uh, metaphor and analogy towards astrophysics when we were talking about Mandelbrot um, uh, or the cabbage, the other person always has to get the understanding and feeling that he or she is involved in the decision making, is involved in the solution. Uh, obstacles, this may include preju um, prejudices, right? Um, seeking after the only proper solution and Assuming that the options are limited, assuming that the cake is limited, to, to speak in this kind of uh, metaphor again. Developing only unilateral positions and arguments. So you have to be very, very creative uh, to come around with options that um, may be uh, playing a role in the, um, in the negotiation. And finally, develop neutral assessment criteria. So the fourth principle involves the application of fair standards and procedures. Uh, so, for example, scientific studies, reports, uh, expertise uh, from um, researchers, for example, similar cases or social um, and ethical standards such as fairness, justice, etc. So if you are able to undermine your suggestion with uh, expertise, with external expertise or with some kind of social and ethical standards, then this is much, uh, much stronger, much more convincing, of course. So the advantages that standards are discussed instead of wishes. And uh, that is uh, very, very, uh, very, very instrumental to utilize that in, uh, in the negotiation process. Otherwise, you may be always accused of being subjective. Uh, of course, everybody is always subjective if he or she is uh, arguing. However, if you are able to undermine, like I said, um, your arguments, your uh, suggestions with research, with uh, legislation, with scientific studies or reports, white papers, uh, pro professor uh, expertise, then of course this is coming across as, uh, as much stronger. Yes, and uh, this is about uh, the Harvard principle um, of successful negotiation. So these are the four aspects that play a role. Not uh, there are also other aspects uh, aspects that are important, like we mentioned before, but these are the key factors um, developed by the um, Harvard Law School, this project on negotiation at the Harvard Law School. Um, I end the recording here, of course, as always, I stay in the line, but um, that is the, uh, the first and very, very important element um, in successful negotiation to understand and be aware of the Harvard principles of successful negotiation. Thanks very much and uh, I
See you for another session then next week. Cheers and bye-bye.